Today we're looking at the Pimax Crystal Super. Welcome back to The Construct. So we recently looked at the Pimax Crystal Lite, which is a affordable entry level into high-end PC VR. But today, this is the Pimax Crystal Super, and this thing is off the charts. At 3840 by 3840 resolution and 50 PPD, I had no idea that it could get any clearer than the Primax Crystal Lite, but they did it. The screens are the same QLED mini LED as the Pimax Crystal Lite, but we're talking about twice as many pixels being rendered. And to be fair, Pimax is asking almost twice the price as the Pimax Crystal Lite. The Pimax Crystal Super sells for about 1700 US dollars before taxes. While the Pimax Crystal Lite was at a comfortable sub $1,000 at about 838 US dollars. But like I said in the Crystal Lite review, if you are looking for the highest end you can get and you have the PC to support it, these devices are what you're looking for. As far as what you get in the box, you get an extra facial interface that's a little bit thicker than the one that's on here. And of course you get cable, wall charger, and two USB cables for charging your controllers. The controllers are actually the same as the Pimax Crystal Lite, so not a whole lot of difference here. Built-in charging, of course, just nice. It feels like a premium feature, in my opinion. So I know everyone says that the Crystal Super is more comfortable than the Crystal Lite. And at first glance, it doesn't look like it should be, right? But let me pull in the Crystal Lite here. You can see kind of the different shape you're getting there. It's like there's less space here on the Super. So this is the Super, it's the Crystal Lite. And also you can see the width difference, right? You can see the difference here to here. You can feel this a little bit. It just kind of feels a little bit more wobbly while you're playing it. And this has a more compact feel to it. So the Primax Crystal Super clearly at this resolution and at this price is for the premium VR viewer, especially for sim racers. Obviously the field of view is just so much wider than something like the Quest 3. You just get this presence feeling that it's hard to explain. But this even suits you if you are just a pixel peeper and looking for the most clarity you can get in a headset today. I have to say these aspheric lenses are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it, it kind of looks like you're looking through your headset, like through a, like a SLR, like a mirrorless camera. Everything looks super sharp, almost like this look looks right now. That's how all of your games kind of look. In addition to the increased resolution, you get eye tracking with the Pimax Crystal Super, something you don't get on the light. And that's really good because with all of these pixels, it's really going to stress out your graphics card and having eye tracking not only is cool for foveated rendering and that rendering that can be focused just on where your eyes look. I put this to the test and it does work out well. So there's two types of dynamic foveated rendering. I've been testing the Crystal Super for about a week now. So I have some thoughts about how it performed. So the two types, quad views and central priority rendering, they behave in extremely different ways. Quad views is probably the more aggressive, more technically advanced way of pulling off the foveated rendering. The issue I have with it is that you can see that you are just locking in on a particular part of the screen to make it more sharp. So if you really need a lot of this foveated rendering to be able to get the performance that you need, you can risk seeing it a little too much. Here's an example. Here you'll see that when I look at this lamp and then look away, you can see how pixelated it gets, or even something as simple as like controller tool tips, things like that, that are just out of your vision until you look at them. They look very blurry. It's almost distracting how blurry they look. So if you need to have this turned up really, really high, it almost defeats the purpose because you lose the fidelity experience that you're looking for with something like the Crystal Super. So I am running the 4070 Ti Super, which is almost the equivalent of like a 4080. So it's on the higher end. And with my settings, I like to use the ultra or the quality setting because what I want the Crystal Super to be doing is trying to give me the best visuals it can. I found the perfect balance for me was to use the ultra setting on the quad views 
dynamic foveated rendering, along with the NVIDIA GPU upscaling that is available on my card. Something else to mention is that this doesn't work with all games. So you'll notice it, particularly with Alien Rogue Incursion, you can see it drastically working, trying to make sure that everything stays crisp and trying to make sure that the performance stays high. Other games, I didn't notice it so much. Maybe it's not compatible, but things seem to be running pretty good. Usually central priority rendering is all I really needed in these games. And you can turn quad views off in this case because it's not actually gonna use it anyway. You can customize how much quad views changes your picture. So there are some settings here where you can click customize and adjust the horizontal gaze area, the vertical gaze area, the gaze resolution, the peripheral area resolution, all of it is customizable. So if you do see that kind of distracting blur and just kind of too much in your periphery, you can adjust that here. I'm kind of a simple guy. I like to just have a preset setting. So I've just been going with the quality for now. As far as how far I'm able to go with my particular card, I'm only using like half of the resources across the board. The latest version of Pimax Play lets you monitor your performance within the system. So you can pin a window and see how well you're doing. Is that the 4070 Ti Super only has 16 gigs of VRAM. So it gets to be using around 11 or 12 gigs. And, and I even see the low memory alert in Half-Life Alex when that happens. I think the field of view on the Super is at about 120 degrees, which is really wide. So when this thing is on correctly and you're experiencing that wide field of view and all of this is just working, it, it really is a very, very immersive experience. You can feel that the front of the headset gets a little bit warm after use, but this ventilation up here comes in handy. You can see there's ventilation even built into the facial interface right here. So I haven't really had this get hot. I haven't had any lens fogging issues or anything like that, like you see on smaller standalone headsets. It probably helps that the graphics are on board on your PC and not inside the headset. But let's talk about the visuals. The visuals are super crisp. I, I, I feel like I just said this about the Pimax Crystal Light, but here we are again. I didn't do through the lens footage last time, but we have to do it this time. The edge to edge clarity is just as good as the crystal light, if not better. There are small, small, very small instances of chromatic aberration on the edge, but you don't really look at the edge that much because of the larger field of view. When it comes to using the Crystal Super and the Pimax Play app, I'm already familiar from using the other headset, so I was able to jump right in. The barrel distortion that I mentioned before is still present here on the Pimax Crystal Super. Let me show you the setting that I'm changing that, that completely removes that. I've had to change this horizontal IPD offset to 1.5 on the left and right, and then negative 1.5 on the left and right for the vertical offset. For some reason, this completely fixes that barrel distortion issue for me. I have no idea why, but this works. So can your PC actually use something like this? Now I will say, if you don't have like a 40 series card or higher, you will have to utilize things like the foveated rendering, maybe decreasing some of the resolution just to get this to work smoothly. The clarity is great, but it's lost if you can't keep a steady frame rate or you just end up crashing out half the time. All right, so one of the things I like to test out is older games. This is Boneworks, one of the classic kind of tried and true VR titles, but the audio you're hearing right now, I'll switch back and forth between the audio of my camera and the audio here in the Pimax Crystal Super. So this audio here is from the Crystal Super and it's not so bad. I heard, you know, onboard microphones can be hard to get right on a headset. Now I'll switch back to the camera here so you can hear the difference in the audio of the Pimax Crystal Super and the DJI mic I have on my chest. Seeing some of these artifacts like up close in such fidelity is absolutely insane. The slam tracking is okay. In optimal lighting conditions, it seems to work fine. It works a little bit better. Maybe it's a placebo effect than the Crystal Light, but there's a bit more shakiness than you see in something like the Quest 3. And I do believe the Lighthouse faceplate tracking is coming to the Crystal Super, so there's always that option. You can see here, I can hold my hands pretty steady, right? I can hold them still. And when I tested the Crystal Light, it's a little shaky. It could be because of the more optimal sunlight that I have in this room right now. It's not 
bulb light, it's sunlight. I think that makes a difference. You can see I can hold this, this laser absolutely still. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of issues with the slam tracking. So it's interesting. And like I said, this thing coming in at almost $1,800, it's not a cheap device by any means, but that's on purpose. This is premium high-end PC VR we're looking at here. Now, should you get it? Now, this is a definite buy if you're looking for the best visuals you can get in PC VR and you're not worried about being tethered to your PC. On the other hand, it is heavy. If you're used to standalone, you know, non-tethered devices, this is huge and it's going to feel huge especially coming from smaller devices pimax play application is doing its best to make the experience as customizable as possible but with that comes a little bit of a learning curve so you'll be in the menus kind of tweaking things here and there and you have to start your games from your pc everything is not built into the headset so if that doesn't tickle your fancy maybe the headset isn't for you my final thought is that it's not for everybody, but if it is, it checks the boxes and it checks them sweetly. How do you sweetly check boxes? I don't know. It just works in the places that it is supposed to work. So if you're watching this near the date I'm publishing it, Pimax has a Black Friday deal going on right now that can be stacked with my 3% discount code, the construct. They have a bundle package where you can get a microphone and all types of stuff. And also $70 off the Pimax Crystal Super. Did a review on that one, so check that out right up here. And we'll see you here next time in the construct. Peace.